to a very, very wet gardening 365. Remember to stir that fruit cap daily. Hear the yeast hissing. Our yucca's not looking very good. The leaves on it have turned brown and it seems to be since we've moved it outside. Now we put it in a position where it's getting a lot of the sun during the day. And I found out that yuccas don't particularly like direct sun. So what I'm going to do is move it to the other side of the balcony and then it will only get morning sun. And there seems an ideal place. So I've shifted it to its new place. And I hope it does better there. We'll keep you informed how that looks. Now as I've said before, we collect seed heads, dry them out, and then hopefully we can grow some new plants. So here I've got some everlasting sweet peas and some allium seeds which grow into bulbs eventually it takes about three years so i'm going to put those in now with the sweet peas i'm going to pop probably one seed maybe two in each pot depending on how many seeds i've got the reason why you can put more than one if one doesn't germinate at least you have got one that does grow all in and we'll see how they germinate and next up the alliums all in and i just cover them with a little bit of soil all done and we'll see how they germinate I've been lazy, I haven't even weeded the tomatoes yet, but I said I was going to do quite some time ago, so I'm going to make up for that now, and I'm going to weed all of the soil. I'm much happier with it, pulled all the weeds out, and you will notice certain ones there, okay, and I think they're marigolds, I think Claire's put, put them in, I'm not totally sure. The homemade hothouse, I wonder how the chilies are looking. Well, really quite pleased with the chilies at the moment. You'll see the self-set tomato still doing well. And over the back with some big weeds that I need to take out at some point. And over the other side, these are our peppers. Uh, and if you look, they've got flowers on. And what does that tell you? That I'll start feeding them very shortly. And it's feed day on Saturday, so you'll see me the, giving these some feed. Plenty of flowers now forming on our dwarf beans. And if you look very closely, there's a little bean there. So that won't be too long till that's ready. And again with the beans, I'll probably give them some feed as well on Saturday. Well that's it for today in the greenhouse. Gonna head back inside now. Ducks don't seem to mind this wet weather though. And today we're gonna be making homemade cider. And this is the ingredients and the equipment you're gonna need. You can need one of them. Hopefully you've got one of them, it's a saucepan. You need a one gallon demijohn. I've got some brown demerara sugar there. Okay, uh, and believe it or not, that is completely optional. You need, ideally, champagne yeast. And you need an airlock. And you need apples out of your garden. Because if they're not out of your garden, it's not covered on gardening 365. Again, we're going to start off with the basic ingredient, which is juice from apples. Okay, and it doesn't matter what quantity you put in there, because all you're going to use that for is dissolving the sugar. Now then, if you want to do this recipe with just two ingredients, apple juice and apples pressed from your garden, I should say. Uh, if you want to do it with two ingredients, apples and yeast, that's fine. And I found out that it comes out about 10.50 which is about 5%, but I'm going to add in some sugar and there's 500 grams there, put that in there and I've done the experiment before, it comes out about 1080, which is about 8 9%, which is strong. So warning, kids under 18 don't make homemade cider. Fire her up, bring it just short of the boil and then add the sugar in. With the sugar in, give it a good stir. When it's all dissolved, turn off the heat and let, let cool a little. Meanwhile, put all of your crushed apples into the demijohn. I'm using four at the moment. The one in the that's got the sugar in and three others. Apples. I believe it or not, you're going to need one gram of yeast. And that's five grams in there. So you're going to divide that 
by five. And that's what one gram looks like. Add it into the cider. I put it into a little glass first of all, so you can make sure it's got really well mixed. And then from there, give it a, wherever I've gone, give it a good mix. So that all of the yeast disappears into the cider. And I just give it a few minutes. And then you pour that into your apples, plus the apples with the sugar. Everything now all poured in together. And if you notice, there's quite a gap between where the cider is and the top of the bottle. That's because when it ferments, it'll ferment over the top. Now fitted an airlock. And I've put some water into the airlock to create an airtight seal. When the cider ferments, the air is released out of the cider through the airtight lock and then nothing harmful can get into the cider to contaminate it. Here's a cider I've had going for a while now and you can still see it's still fermenting well so it's not ready to bottle yet. Now if you notice there's a quite a difference in colour between the two ciders and the reason why the cider that I've just done has got the sugar in it okay and as the sugar breaks down to create alcohol changes into a, a different colour. Now in the second part of cider making I'll show you how to work out when it's finished and when it's ready for bottling. And this marvellous tool is known as an hydrometer and it's used for testing the density of liquids. And at the moment it's about 1020 so it's probably going to need another day or two. This is the story of our wildlife area. We moved into our property in December 2016 and March 2017 I decided I was going to clear the area that we later found out was a pond. So I cut all the trees down and basically worked really hard for a long period of time. Okay, really pleased when I did it. We had lots of fun. Lots of fires, cutting up firewood. Okay, and we just made a, a number of little features including stuff to attract wildlife uh, but the pond had a liner in it we decided to have the pond dug out a little bit and the liner removed Spud obviously helped out Spud loves playing in the mud and it looked pretty good when we, we took all the liner out and re landscaped it we had some ornaments that we took down, created more features. The next day we went down, even without the liner, the pond had completely filled up and we was totally at a loss. Why? And we found out later there was a spring underneath it. So what we decided to do to keep it totally natural, no more liner and start planting some plants. We also put a statue in the middle that we call Lady of the Lake and we used that to determine the level of the pond. We were really pleased with it, uh, but it looked quite bare on the side, so we had to let nature take over and fill that up for us. Statue things we put in certain places, and we actually got a sign saying wildlife area that we was really proud about. Then came the following winter. Okay, the pond almost iced over completely. You can see lots of snow that year. And the following year, frog spawn. So wildlife was there and was really pleased. Made some, some wildlife areas. And the daffodils came up again. And we were starting to like it, really like it. And the grass started growing. In fact, it really grew. Plants started growing as well. We've got some of our irises, water irises in there. Got some duckweed, which our ducks later removed, which was good. And we had some wildflowers growing, uh, some cowslips. And basically, and it's looking really, really good. And these, as it's gone through the years now, it's evolved. Got ferns growing there, bluebells. 
and definitely there's tadpoles which you can see so we raise frogs there's lots of newts as well in the pond other plants have come the water irises have flowered it's greened up loads of buttercups there foxgloves it's a rhododendron that we did plant and when we cut the hedge down we kept some of the wood in there as a feature and this was during the storm where it completely flooded and not long afterwards frogs come to spawn so the process has continued this is very recently now okay it's looking really green and lush and that's exactly the same pond as you saw that's just nature reclaiming and we encourage that And that's pretty much the story of the pond so far, and that brings us up to present date. Day two of the cider doesn't seem to be fermenting as much as normal. I've used a different yeast. It is fermenting. But it doesn't seem to be frothing up as much as it normally does. I'll keep you informed. And what do I always say? Stir the fruit cap daily. That concludes another Gardening 365 video. Uh, the rain stopped, which is good, and hopefully now, the next few days, it's gonna really warm back up again and the rain's gone, which is great. Uh, thank you for everybody that's joined on the Facebook page. Really appreciate that. Keep inviting your friends, that would be wonderful. I need you all to subscribe to YouTube to watch the videos that I'm making. They take a lot of time, okay? And I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe. Okay, thank you, bye.